We're going to take a moment now to look at the best learning practices, even a comparison and a contrast between thinking and feeling. Now remember that the preferences or the partnership of the thinking and feeling is that third letter within MBTI type. It's part of the functioning pair and it's the piece of the functioning pair that helps in making decisions. So approximately 40% of our population are thinking preferences while 60% are feeling preferences. The thinking preference has a keyword of analytical and they want to know how things are proved. How did things come to this conclusion? What is the methodology? They want to know that things are valid and reliable. In contrast, a feeling person is looking more on a personal level and that's their learner keyword is personal. They are more interested in how things are going to impact people as well as values and goals and relationships. They want to know how all information is going to help other people and other people are going to be for them within their realm of their personal context so family friends community and even the world at large they're going to be very interested in knowing how information can solve the problems of the world so let's look at some of the differences. A thinking person, if you remember this, is that they're very data driven. They like to assess things. They want to be able to have cause and effect. They're looking for feedback and they want their feedback to be very disconnected and analytical just like they are. Whereas a feeling person is going to like feedback, but their feedback is really going to be, to be very positive. Um, a feeling person needs the positive piece of it. A thinking person also wants objectives and practical application, but their practical application is going to be a little bit different than the practical application of the feeling person. A thinking person wants to understand the practical application, not so they can go out and take care of it, but so that they can really understand all of the nooks and crannies of a piece of information. Whereas a feeling person has that practical application because they want to be able to use it immediately to solve any kinds of dilemmas or problems within society. A thinking individual also prefers structure and even traditional teaching techniques. Now your feeling person loves the aesthetics, their people driven harmony. Harmony is more important than anything else. If you just remember that harmony is the foundation for all feeling people. They love to have emotions in their learning environment. And that's in contrast to a thinking person because emotions just muddy the water. A thinking person does not want any kind of emotions mixed into their learning environment. A feeling person also wants close relationships, a moderate pace, and of course a practical application that applies to how they can solve the problems of those around them and the world in general. So let's look at some of the similarities. A choice board is a great option for thinking and feeling types. And the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit more about a choice board. They both love to have discussion. However, the thinking person is going to be able to approach a discussion at many different levels and be able to say that they really enjoy the debate. They will enjoy a little bit more of the analytical side, whereas the thing, feeling person is going to enjoy more discussion when it's based on harmony. They don't like the critical part of it, and they're certainly not going to like any kind of conflict. They both like to have feedback. Again, the feedback is a little bit different, though. Thinking people are going to enjoy more of an analytical type of feedback, whereas feeling is going to really prefer more of that positive, harmonious feedback. They both enjoy looking at patterns and they both enjoy working in teams. One of the best things to do for all of the different learning personalities is a choice board. And with the choice board, you are able to create a variety. Maybe you want it to be only a nine grid, a three by three, but you're able to make as many choices as you want. And then you allow the students to choose what they want to do. And this can be work for any subject or any topic. Now the students have the opportunity to choose what they like best. Now if you want them to reach beyond themselves and to be able to try something they wouldn't normally do, you can still give them these same opportunities and then they're able to reach just a little bit outside of their comfort zone without feeling completely out of sync with themselves. For example, one thing that I've done with the choice board is I will go through and say to a student, go through and X out everything you absolutely would not want to do. And then say, now I want you to choose one of them. 
Now what they've done is they've been able to really choose something that is really outside of their comfort zone and it causes them to grow just a little bit. So for instance, with an introvert, they may not be very happy or excited about doing some kind of role play. However, an interview or going and approaching a stranger to interview them may not be as difficult as role playing.